fix things though. Uh, Hattie takes up too with his ego. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there he is so big he has to have two. <laughs> <laughs> there is um, the reason there is six is because yeah I have one that's running on the like that's running the program the other one that's on me that way the victory above my head actually looks it says victory it doesn't it's not flipped I figured that out last week yeah was, there you go <laughs> that one took a little bit but I finally got it. <laughs> uh, all right, Wooly, I'm sending you the link over right now. I mean, I know that I'm in a bedroom, so I can't really talk. Um, but Ryan, it's really cool for you to call in from a prison. How's it going over there? <laughs> <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> it's, it's an off-campus housing basement. <laughs> <laughs> do what you got to do. Uh, the paint yeah, covered I, the blood. I, I have moved about and like two months now so soon i'll be in a different environment hopefully sweet uh, 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 we're moving again different place uh not sure yet might move to lakewood where i'm from it's nice uh, see where uh, uh, where if any job takes me somewhere or something uh, that's all right all right yeah. And we're going to bring, all right, let's see. I need to do begin in. All righty. For those who are joined, um, we're going to get started in just in about six minutes here. Just trying to get the link out to everybody, get the email sent out. Uh, that way the room can fill up a little bit. So if you, are sitting in the lobby. Let us know your name, school, program, town, city, and where you're from. All right. <clears throat> I'm all over Twitter. Yeah, we're just going to let the room fill up a little bit. And then we'll get going here. <clears throat> so, Mike, first spring ball practice today. Talk us through a little bit mm -hmm. how it was. It went pretty well. Uh, I mean, it was, a, it was an early one, so yeah, guys were a little, uh, you know, a little lackadaisical. Yeah, you know, at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, getting up really early, that's tough. But uh, sure. I mean, once we got going, the energy was great. Yeah, everyone was flying around. Uh, yeah, it you was guys good. always it was, go six a.m. Uh, no, we have we have a decent amount of six a.m. practices, but um, we have six a.m. like six thirty. It just it just depends on. The day. I mean, we're kind of one of the last priority teams right now with the other spring sports taking first priority of the field, you know? Yeah, gotcha. Did the swag from the haircut intimidate all the freshmen? <laughs> yeah, it did. Steve's on a roll tonight. <laughs> Killing it. Uh, all right, so we want to go here. Do a Watch couple more your, uh, here. Highlight tape from high school, Mike. What did you say? You said you watched mine? Yeah, on, on Twitter the other day. I was, I was checking it out. Loved it. Which one? Uh, senior or junior? The one that was in, yeah, your, your senior year one, I think. The one that was in your Twitter bio. Mm -hmm. I forgot that was even in there. Yeah. I just I just put it there last year when my school got closed because for coaches that were recruiting. Oh, yeah. Where'd you go before? Uh, Mount Ida College. It's, okay. in, it's in New and New and Mass, which is like right next to Boston. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. And for those that are tuning in, we're going to get started in just in about four minutes and 40 seconds now. We're just letting the room fill up a little bit. Um, if you are here, let us know your name, school, program that you coach at or that you play at and uh, the town city that you're from. That way we can shout you out live and before we get things going here. So uh, do you guys have any thoughts on schematically how the Pats are going to have to adjust for next year without Hall of Fame, future Hall of Fame tight end, Gronk? I mean, mm. to literally lose the best ever means you have a gaping hole in the middle of the field that you used to just use to draw bodies there. So uh, can't run the same offense anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I think they'll adapt kind of like how they did last year with the whole running more eye formation 21, 22 personnel stuff. Yeah, but even then, the who's going to block? No one's going to block like him. Yeah. yeah. 
That's yeah, no, okay. no matter what they do, no matter w- whether it's the same formations or not, like you, <clears throat> it's a major downgrade. No matter what you're doing, unless you're you know just going to run spread and they don't have the receivers for it, they got to figure out something quick. Yeah, I saw some people having them take that Irv Smith, the dude from uh, Bama. Yeah, yeah, I saw that today too. And then I mean, I like in my opinion, I think I mean obviously there's there's no way that you can replace a guy like that with just one player. So I think drafting a guy that Herb Smith who can be like a development guy and then have a guy that's a, just like an all around good tight end in free agency or a trade or something, I think it would be their best best move to be able to like stay schematic wise on like the same wavelength that they've been on and then also try to replace that personnel. Yep. You know, I um I don't know if I'll ever but because you have to find the right talent for it. And despite who Andes brought to that offense, being mm-hmm. that shifty, almost H-back, but mostly tight end, I mean, they could go the, the really athletic route and try to get someone that is just a little bit shiftier. It kind of complement, you know, Edelman on the yeah. other side of the field. Yep. Even find like a, a, a converted receiver or something, like some teams have tried to do. Especially with kind of with what you're saying, getting more of that like H back kind of guy that can do some more stuff out in the passing game and even occasionally do like shovel option or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I just as a football fan, I love seeing Josh and Bill having to now reinvent again because if anyone mm-hmm. can do it, it's them. Yep, for sure. I feel like Braxton Miller would be a good fit on their team. He's with Philly right now. Yeah, that'd be yeah. interesting. Guys, uh, for people that are hanging out now, uh, we're going to get started just in about two minutes here. We do have some people that um, typed in the chat. Danny Hat at Bellingham High School. What's up, Danny Hat? Yeah. And uh, Coach Troy Fetty, Weir High School out of Weir- Weirton, West Virginia. Hopefully I said that right. Thanks for joining us. And we're going to get started in about a minute and 40 seconds here. Just have a few more emails that we're sending out to uh, make sure we get this room filled up and um, you know we're able to present – on a packed house tonight, the two things, the two topics we're going to be going over tonight, rolling and disguising coverages, and we have uh, Coach Ryan Swingle and Mike Pina going over uh, the tight zone as well. So we're going to get started just in about a minute and 10 seconds, and uh, we'll take it from there. So guys, one minute warning for your chit-chatter. Got it. All righty. Okay. So I need to transition. You think the Pats draft a QB this year then? Or no? Yeah. The rumor the rumors of Rosen he making a, yeah. a late trade with for Rosen. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. That'd be interesting. Just from like how that I, would work. I mean, obviously clearing it out from earlier for Murray or whatever, but I think Rosen could work uh, the price. See Will Greer. I'll see Will Greer come in and be Big a fan of Will Greer. Man, he can let it rip. He really can. I, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a pipe dream, but um, he balled out at his pro day the other day too. He did. I heard. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I thought that they've drafted court. I, I was so sure they would last year, and I was pretty sure the year before that. So at this point, I just um, uh, just like everyone else, I just sit back and watch. No one knows. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we're just about ready to go. You guys ready to go? For sure. Yeah. Mike, feel good? Feel good, yep. All right. Let's do it. <clears throat> so for those that are joining us or uh, this is your first time joining us, uh, my name is Chris Haddad. I'm here with Ryan Swingle and Mike Pina, and we're going to be talking about – Steve just jumped off. Steve McGrath just jumped off uh, along with Brian Woolard. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about disguising and rolling coverages – and the tight zone. So uh, first off, what is Victory? Victory is a football education platform for both coaches and players, something that we've built to help uh, coaches and players learn the game. We have four different mediums which way which we do it. Our, our mobile app, our blogs, our podcasts, which feature former and professional um, profession, uh, excuse me, professional players, and our live clinic as well, So, uh, which you're experiencing right now. So um, without further ado, I'm excited. I just want to jump into this. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> right. So, um, what we're going to do is guys, I'm going to go first. My presentation here on disguising and rolling coverages is going to be 
extremely short. It's going to be extremely high level as well. Um, I want really want to get into Coach Ryan Swingle and uh, Mike Pina's presentation on tight zone. That's going to be the meat of this clinic is going to be their presentation. Uh, they have a lot of great stuff prepared for you. So without further ado, I'm going to pull up my presentation here, rip through it real quick. Um, as always, we encourage questions in the chat. We have two people monitoring the chat right now, both on uh, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. So if you have questions, please fire them away. They will be answered uh, live on stream as well. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to fire up this rolling coverages and disguising coverages, and we're going to go from there. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. And we're presenting. You guys see this? Mm -hmm. All righty. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, tonight's topics, as mentioned, rolling and disguising coverages. So, what we're going to talk about is why we want to roll and disguise coverages. Okay. First thing is just to confuse offense coordinators and quarterbacks. And I'm talking more of a high school, college level. Um, I coach at a local high school. So for me, it's more of the high school level. A lot of the game is turning now to pre-snap reads and RPOs. So rolling and disguising coverages like we're going to go over is just a way to confuse them. And it's also a way to make them uneasy. So if you have a quarterback who's used to reading an outside linebacker, um, or an overhang player that's and then all of a sudden he slides in the box and you're getting a roll coverage it does make things a little bit difficult especially on the fly um, and ultimately we want to disrupt that rhythm and make him as uneasy as possible uh, how do we do it so the first the few things that we do is verbal communication and hand signals this is something i installed two years ago and it's been extremely easy for us the kids love it and it's extremely easy for them just to make sure that they're all on the same page with just a simple hand signal and a simple verbal signal as well. Um, the way that we cover up the offense is through uh, match coverage, which is also identified as rip Liz coverage. I'm not going to go too much into that. I think that's a whole separate clinic, um, the whole rip Liz concept. So I just wanted to put it out there because I know some questions might come through is how are you matching up these defenders or spot dropping them? Uh, we do use the match system with the two, three and two. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to get too much into that, but I do want to put it out there just in case people are wondering. And the biggest thing about all this is just keeping it simple. And we're going to run through a couple clips here. I have a couple pieces of film as well. Um, that way you're able to see it visually. Okay, so the biggest thing is the communication process, right? From going from coach to player, because if your players aren't on the same page as the coach, this thing is a complete disaster, okay? So what I've developed is I let the kids come up with all the names, okay, for all the coverages. And what I'm going to go over in a minute, will, you know, we'll pretty much simplify of why I let the kids come up with all the, the names, okay? So what I do every year is I, I grab two kids and I, I dub them my creative team. <laughs> and those are just two kids that they come up with all the names for everything that we do, okay? Now, the reason I let the kids name everything, okay? And here's the perfect example why. If we're rolling from cover two to cover three, okay? From two to three, 23, I'm thinking Michael Jordan. They're thinking LeBron James, okay? And we actually, two years ago, we actually used LeBron as, as our verbal cue. Uh, if we're going from three to one, I'm thinking Reggie Miller, John Lester, Jamal Lewis. They're thinking Cam Chancellor, okay? Uh, again, from four to two, they're thinking Kevin Love. This is before he got on um, Cleveland. You know, I'm thinking Jackie Robinson, Mario Navarro, Ronnie Lott. So this is why I let the kids name it because it's easier for them to reference going from number to number, okay? Again, if we're rolling from cover two to cover zero, uh, we're from Massachusetts, so Gordon Hayward's number 20. You know, but then again, if I had to name it, I would have named it Gary Payton or Barry Sanders. So this is something that I, I, I strongly believe in is letting the kids dictate what the uh, the verbal cues are just because it, it's easier for them to relate to it as opposed to stuffing you know someone like Gary Payton down their throats of they might know who might not know who it is even though they probably should <clears throat> okay hand signals I gift up a few of our hand signals here and this is just something that uh, once again I let the kids decide or right, if we want to roll to a coverage or we want to snap to a coverage okay and this is the two different variants that we use so the roll coverage is before the snap during the cadence 
we're going to roll to this pre-snap, okay? So our signal for roll was just I'd roll my fist in my hand, okay? And all the kids would communicate to each other, me just rolling my fist in my hand. The snap would be like my hands were snapping back and forth, okay? That means we were hitting it on the snap. So that way we were holding our position, whether it be a too high look, and then we were on the snap, we were rolling down to a cover three, or vice versa, we were rolling from a cover two to cover three before the snap, okay? So the two different variants that we have when rolling from coverages were either a simple roll pre-snap, or on the snap of the football, we were rolling down, okay? Now, in Massachusetts, um, we're allowed five timeouts, okay? So three fulls and two, two 20s. So what we would do in the first quarter is we would actually call a 20, uh, excuse me, a full timeout, and the whole defense would come over, and we'd talk about the cadence, okay? The cadence is big because that's one thing on film that you're just not able to pick up, and that's why going to live games to scout is probably your best bet, but we would talk about the cadence pre-snap, okay? What is it? It's... Ready, set, hit, just like that. Or there's no verbal signal. It's just a, a leg lift or whatever it may be. So we want to make sure that we're timing everything up based on what their cadence is. And if it's just a verbal cadence, we want to be able to pick it up early, especially early on, early on the game. This will help uh, helps us roll the coverage and snaps the coverage properly. Okay. So what's what's the purpose of this? Why do we want to roll coverages? Okay. And why do we want to use the roll and the snap and the verbal cues? Um, for teams that are fully involved in the look at me concepts where they fake snap and then everyone looks over to the sideline, this is just something that I can yell out and give a verbal signal real quick. And that way we can all communicate it. So for us, especially with the look at me teams, it was extremely valuable for us to, to get it out there as, as fast as we possibly can and get everyone on the same page. Um, we've also paired it with disguised fronts. So if we want to go, and I'm going to show you guys in a minute, we have the psycho package we have where we have everyone up at the last scrimmage and we can disguise the front. Really, all we're doing is bringing our tackles and three techniques, uh, our, our ends to wide nines, and then we're stuffing those two linebackers in the A-gaps. Um, and then we're just, we can run anything, all of our coverages, cover two, cover three, whatever it is, we can bail them out just by simply rolling or, or hitting the snap on the coverage as well. Um, all of... <clears throat> excuse me, all of our coverages have built-in rules. So any motion shift we're getting, we're going to kill to it. And we can also zone lock any three by one on the backside. So, um, you know, let's say we go into a game and we say, okay, anytime we get a trio or trips or any three by one concept, we want to lock it with the backside and then we want to zone the front side of it. This is all, these rules are all built in to any time that we do call a roll or snap coverages. So if we get it, it automatically kills everything. So, um, I'm going to dive into some film right now, which will just give you different examples of, of what we mean here. Um, this clip right here is uh, we were playing a team that was a big look at me team. So I'm going to roll the clip from the very beginning here. If you see me, I'm actually standing right here. And um, we actually don't get a snap off, but this just shows you the flexibility of it. So like I said, this team was a look at me team. They get all set. The quarterback calls the play. He comes back. Okay. You see we got a blitz we don't like. And then I just quick, 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 snap. We're hitting this. We're hitting this. Everyone's communicating with each other, and we're good to go. Okay. This team also ends up calling a timeout because they didn't see what they like. But as you can see, the, the flexibility of this play call just to get us into a different co coverage as fast as we possibly can, and we're hitting it on the snap. Okay. And like I said, they end up burning a timeout here, so... Okay. The second clip I want to show here is uh, we actually hit. Oh, excuse me, right here. There we go. So this is we're we're giving a too high look here, and we're actually rolling to cover three. I believe this is pre-snap. Oh, excuse me, this is on the snap. Okay. Our uh, our strong safety does a really good job of holding the look as long as he possibly can. Our free safety needs to get over to the middle of the field a little bit. He got a little bit lazy, and our Sam really needs to push out here too. But it gives you a good look at where it messes up a quarterback pre-snap because he's thinking that he has a bubble or some sort of hook defender here if the corner bails out, which he does initially pre-snap. But because we're rolling down and rolling the coverage over, it actually ends up screwing everything up. So I'm going to run this through a couple times here so you're able to see it. Okay, one more time here. Okay, I'm going to play it slow motion here. And our corner does a really good job of getting out as well. He bails out. We're coming up through. I would like for that 
strong safety to sit a little bit deeper, but he does a great job coming up and ultimately ends up ending the play there. So one more time, just to roll. Like I said, I'd like our linebacker to push out a little more, but it just gives you that flexibility to hit it and confuse the quarterbacks, and especially with the look at me teams. Okay, and the last little bit here. This was just a different look. As mentioned, you can run it with disguised coverages. Um, here's just a still frame shot of of one of the looks that we have. So we're in a cover one look here, um, and we're actually we're able to. We're running a dog here. We're just bringing our <clears throat> our linebacker up over the nose and just sending him. But what we like to do as well is bring him up in the double A gap, as I mentioned before, and just fire him from there and just run whatever coverage we need to. But here it's just a straight cover one look. And as you can see, we're not we're disguising what we're in. Um, you know, he's playing off man right now, so you can't really tell if he's man or not. He's pressed up. We got the safety floating over here. So it does look like a three by one look with um with man and a, and a floating free safety here. But it, this just shows you the different flexibility you can use um, with the verbal and the hand signals, especially getting the the message all the way across the board and make sure everyone's on the same page. So um, that's all I had for the coverage portion of it. I want to open it up to any questions if there's anything that came through the chat at all. Um, like I said, my portion was going to be extremely short tonight, but I just wanted to make sure that we're um, – that the – the message of being able to disguise the coverages and roll the coverages can be used into any defense with simply just snapping your fingers like this and giving us some sort of verbal key uh, for the defend uh, for your players to to be able to efficiently activate it um, into a progressive manner. So, um, if there is no questions, guys, you got any questions, Mike and uh, and Ryan or anything? that we talked about i think i'm good on my end feeling good yeah no, nothing all for right me perfect i wanted to keep that as short as possible so uh what Easy i wanted to do yeah that's what i mean it's 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 super easy super simple um i'm a big believer in the kiss mentality keep it simple stupid so yeah um perfect so if there is no questions which there doesn't seem to be i want to get into the meat of this presentation it's going to be with you guys uh just talking about your tight zone coverage and uh, excuse me, your tight zone and uh, everything that goes into that. So I'm going to hand the floor over to you guys and run with it. Cool. Sounds good. Get it all set up here now. Yep. <clears throat> all right. So I'm Ryan Swingle. Uh, Mike Pino will be on here with me today talking about uh, tight zone. I'm going to start by getting right into exactly what tight zone is. Yep. So what is tight zone? Tight zone is a, a great concept. It's a great play. It's an inside run play, which has a hybrid zone slash man scheme. The base scheme runs to open an open two-man surface. There's a big emphasis on prime open A-gaps. The aiming point for the running back is the backside leg of the center. It's versatile. You can t uh, put run tags to it, do read option off of it, and RPOs. All right. And then, uh, so for the basis of the play, it's important to, for the way that we ran at BW, Baldwin Wallace here in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, it's, it's important to establish a mic system. So for tight zone, the first linebacker will be the first linebacker in the box play side. And after that, play side will be labeled as plus one. So if that free safety were to roll down there, he would be the plus one backer. And then the backside linebacker there would be the minus one. Uh, all of the combinations that we're going to take a look at here in the next couple slides are going to be based off the mic. And uh, it's important to get that ID down when, when you're installing this play. And everything is based off of that. So it's really important at the install process to get that concept down. And then for future slides, the mic will be pushed to the front side of the play against odd versus edge pressure. Just one last point on that. So then just getting into the combo names. Uh, if the play side tackle and if a tight end was here, 
the tight end, if they were to combo, it would be labeled as C. The play side tackle and the play side guard be labeled as B. Play side guard and center is A. And then working backside, it goes into numbers. So the center and the backside guard, a, a combo for them would be a one. For the backside guard and backside tackle would be a two. And then for a tight end, and if you have a, a tight end here attached with that backside tackle, if they were going to combo, it would be a three. So for example, on certain run plays in tight zone, as we look at the rules here coming up, a certain combination could be the guard in the center on the play side comboing to the mic. So in this uh, picture, if it was tight zone going to the left, that combo would be an A to the mic. All right. So in order to install this scheme, it's important to know the rules against all fronts. Uh, in today's clinic, we're going to talk mainly about even front and then get into some different adjustments you can do against odd and bare fronts at the end. Uh, but so the rules for tight zone against an even front, play side tackle is always and forever going to be man on man taking that play side defensive end. Uh, and then if there's any walked up edge pressure in this open ended concept, you're going to have to alert fan to either check to a full zone play by the quarterback, as you can see here, or if a uh, game plan uh, dictates it, you can get into a different look depending on that week and how you decide to attack it. But the play side tackle, always and forever, taking that play side defensive end. Uh, we, 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 for the install that we did, we would take, uh, have that tackle take an inside step to make sure that he would not fight across his face. It's really important trying to pry those A gaps open and hit the crease down the middle. Play side guard, when there's a three technique to his outside, he's always and forever going to be taking that three technique. And then if there's a closed A, so a guy in a two I or a shade on the center, he'll be comboing that A block to the mic with the center. And working to the center now, uh, in a closed play side A gap, he'll be Aang with that play side guard. Versus an open A gap, he will always be secure stepping up to the mic, unless if there's a backside shade, then he'll one with the backside guard to the mic. Then for the backside guard, versus a shade, he's still going to one with the center to the mic. And then versus a 2i or a G, whatever your terminology is for that alignment, it'll just be a backside cutoff trying to get that defensive tackle cut off and open up that A gap. Uh, but it's also important for him to know that it's not the end of the world if he can't get across his face and cut him off as the back will be reading that block for the cutback lane against a uh, backside 2i. And then versus a three technique, he's going to two to the minus one backer with the backside tackle. And then for the backside tackle, depending on whether or not it's a read tag or an auto give tag, we'll talk about those later, uh, he's always going to be working to the minus one, but on a read, he needs to avoid that defensive end and work up to the minus one. So we, we'll say he's locked on him. And then on auto give tags, he'll be tracking to the minus one. So if anything comes across his face, if a defensive end decides a knife across his face, he'll be collecting him on his way up to the minus one backer. And then if there's a three tech, he'll be twoing to the minus one with the backside guard as well. Tight ends are going to follow their tagged course. We'll talk about that in each of the run game tags that can be attached to it. And then the running back has an aiming point of the backside leg of the center is looking to hit that front side A gap to backside B gap. And the quarterback rules are just following the read tag and just getting out of that uh, look against edge pressure and even. Mike, you want to take the run game tags? Yep. So run game tags, we have sale, which is an auto give. Uh, something I don't like auto gives as a quarterback. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the tight end, uh, backside attached and uh, he backside cut off and split. Once again, another auto give. The tight end on the split course kicks out the backside defensive end. Uh, book is a read for the quarterback, and the detached quarterback will read the backside defensive end. Bible, another read. Attached tight end will take the best, cor best course to secure box to alley, which is usually minus two if he appears 
uh, alert cover one, quarterback reads backside defensive end once again. And for bluff, it's a read, tight end on split course uh, evades that backside defensive end. Yeah, and you can still tag some pre-snap RPOs like we'll, we'll look at later for the uh, even the read ones, just looking at different bubble screens. And also on seal and split, you can attach some RPOs to take guys out of the box as well if if your philosophy suits that. Hey, Ryan, can you go in a little bit more detail if you want to go back to that last slide? Just go in a little bit more detail with these run game, run game tags here. Okay, uh, yeah, so seal is going to be a auto give. So no matter what, unless there's an RPO attached on it, uh, the quarterback is always going to be handing the ball off to the running back. It's a way to kind of take that read element out and just say, hey, we're going to run the ball, get downhill, and try to get a few yards no matter what in, in this situation. We're not trying to read anything. So that's so like see, a, short, a short yardage situation or if they're trying to run yeah. clock out in the game? Okay. And that'd or, be the, so in a play call, that'd be that'd be said, you know, whatever yeah, the play call would, is with seal on it. It would be like 12 or 13 seal for the terminology that we gotcha. use saying running to the right or the left based on even rod. And adding that seal tag, split tag, book tag, Bible or bluff to tell us uh, exactly what the what the uh, footwork would be for certain players. So then seal is going to have a, a tight end attached on the backside. So it's a good look to complement the one Bible. They're both attached. Uh, book is going to be detached uh, where you're going to just read that backside defensive end. Split is going to be the tight end coming across the backfield on a split action, just trying to kick out that backside defensive end like Mike talked about. Uh, book and Bible attached and detached tight end. I'm um, just going to read that backside defensive end on both of those. And then bluff is based off of split. So he's going to take that, t the tight end is going to take that same across the backfield action. But instead of kicking out, he's going to influence step him upfield try to get him to bite underneath. If he goes underneath the bluff block, uh, the quarterback's taught to pull it. And if he tries to blow it up and fight over the top of it, then the quarterback will give it. Most of the time on that bluff read, though, you'll see that the defensive ends don't like getting kicked out on the split block and will play underneath it and give a pull pull read. Mm -hmm. All so right. he, he's always he, That defensive end is always going to be in conflict in that situation then. For sure, yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's it's hard to hard to teach a guy to be trying to spill and wrong arm that split block every time, and then you go to have it be red, and then uh, you see a guy just evade step you and get into the flat, and you can do some RPO stuff off of that 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 we'll see, and then also just have him as a lead blocker up into the alley for an extra blocker for the quarterback. Sure. Yep. All right. Now we're going to look at uh, how it'd be drawn up against certain looks on the whiteboard and then go into a little bit of a film cut up. So this play here on the left would be 13 seal odd number, meaning we're going to the left seal. We're going to have the backside cut off by that uh, tight end backside tackle known in the B gap. So he's going to work up through the B gap uh, tracking to that minus one backer. This would be the mic. This is the minus one That backside guard is in a two eye alignment. He's going to, uh, Bucket step, as a lot of people call it. Bucket step to try to cut him off through that play side number, driving through the play side number, and then uh, securing that A gap, but also knowing it's not the end of the world if that guy is really, let me go back here, trying hard to spill over the top of that block and really get into that A gap. Running back can read that block and cut back here off the linebacker as a second read. Uh, versus an open A gap, the center is going to secure step up to the mic, making sure that that play side tackle isn't knifing across into the a gap and if he does collecting him and turning that into an a block on the fly that play side guard in you know, a wrong step technique into the a gap and dig out that three technique trying to pry open those a gaps like we talked about in the intro and then with that outside alignment on the tackle he's going to take him as well with that wrong step sec technique Right now, when you say secure step, is that more of a flat lateral step to make sure there's no penetration through the A gap and then working up to the mic? Yeah, exactly. Just securing that A gap, making sure there's no no stunts or that tight that tackle trying to rock into the A gap. Otherwise, it would turn into a A block combination block on the fly. Yep. So, what are your receivers right. taught to do on this? Uh, on this play, you could either tag a bubble screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Go back there. You either tag a bubble screen to the H, or if it's just a straight auto give with no RPO, 
they're just blocking the guys aligned over top of them in this picture. See the wide angle there. We'll look at the tight for the actual blocking scheme, but this was against an open open A gap there. All right, so on this one, I have the take, take. Center is going to secure up to the mic here, number 34. That backside guard is going to try to cut off this uh, backside defensive tackle. And then the backside tackle on offense is going to work up to this number 48, the backside cut off by the, by the tight end there. And you can see that kind of unfold. The guy doesn't want to get beat across his face, so running back cuts back and gets a nice little gain here. All right, this is going to be Bible. So in this one, we're going to be reading this backside defensive end. Uh, both going to be open A gap and head up two techniques. We game plan it this week where uh, they weren't guys that were going to be playing into one gap or another. They were more two gap guys. So we just had take double takes there by both of the guards. We can look at the tight here in a second. So yeah, there are two gap teams. So our game plan was the backside guard to take and the center secure. Uh, this guy, they try to turn this into a two on the fly. Backside tight end is going to cut him off. Take, take, and secure up to that mic. And we would use that look to the sideline verify where if we didn't like the original play call, we could check into something else. So here we'd be checking into a into a different play here after seeing the defense then reading that backside defensive end on Bible. Now your checks at the line of scrimmage, would it be just yelling out seal, 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 Bible, Bible, Bible? Is that how you would check at the line? For verify, they would, uh, we would do just like killing the play in general and then signaling in a whole new play and we'd Got go it. through our cadence again. But we would have some uh, hurry up stuff that we would carry into every week, like different animal names that we would use. Uh, so, for example, like Tiger could be uh, dope right near 13 seal. And then you'd know, Tiger, we're going to run that, that formation out of that play and get up to the line and run it as quick as possible. Yep. We got a question that came in through the, through the chat here, Ryan. Uh, what's the read from a 4 3 look? So, say if, if you do have that tight end in the box and there's the teams that like to play with the actual linebacker in the box. Right. Um, you know, what's your ID system there and how would you run it in that sense? It would still be, so you'd have here, I'll get to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll actually have one coming up in one of these. Okay. In these yeah, no yep. But most of the time, what you do with that is you just have that backside guy. So the third linebacker labeled as the minus two. And either if you're going to have it be run an RPO off of him, or you're going to read the backside defensive end and then have the tight end climb up to him. Gotcha. That's the main answer for that, though, getting to, getting to the question itself. Mm -hmm. All right, so then with the backside shade, still double takes on the front side. Only difference on this one is it's going to be uh, the backside guard and center are going to be wanting to the mic. So the center is going to take a slight timing step into the A-gap, just get his foot up and put it down, and then lean back hard with his shoulder and elbow and lift underneath the shoulder pads through the defender's uh, midline to try to chip him back into the guard, have the guard overtaken, and ideally have the center work to that Mike linebacker and the tackle still working up, a uh, tight end on the backside cutoff. This was against Capital on the goal line here. This was for touchdown play here. Uh, both guys were walked up, which we didn't like normally, but against this game plan, we knew that, that these guys weren't going to be coming hard off the edge, so we still liked the six-man box look, not having to account for those two guys. Uh, just that pay attention to that one on the backside, the center, the center trying to chip up, get to the linebacker, doesn't do the best job of getting second level. You can see there again, trying to get up second level on this one. Uh, you can tag that bubble screen, the key screen that we called it, to get it to the receivers out in space when 
uh, alignment isn't as good. He had the safety playing 15 yards off the ball, so we'll throw the bubble screen all day. And just kind of looking at that from the tight angle, looking at this one block up to the mic, and then him just going straight up to the tackle while we're reading the defensive end. But that pre-snap RPO dictates us a throw bubble screen. So when we talk about pre-snap RPOs, Ryan, are we talking like you call that tight zone play and it's automatically built in to that yeah, play so you call? So for that one, it would be a 13 book key. So the key screen would be the RPO tag on that. Gotcha. And the quarterback knows with, since we already are reading the defensive end uh, post snap, can't read two guys at once. So the, yep. the key screen would just be a pre-snap leverage and numbers thing. Got it. All right. Moving on. All right. So this is run to a close day. So the main difference on this one, still going to have that backside cut off and seal. But instead, we're going to have a two to the minus one by the backside guard and backside tackle. And then for the play side guard and center, they're going to A. So we've got two combinations on that. This is the most ideal front, I would say, to run it to is if you can get it to a, uh, if, if you're running it out of this formation and under front. That way you can create the most combinations possible. Working your double teams up to the second level is really the goal of this play. Uh, it allows for teams that are maybe a little bit undersized that don't want to have guys be in one-on-one -on -one matchups every single play of the game uh, to get good double teams working up to the second level and have the versatility to read that backside defensive end, do different RPO stuff off of it is really really the base of this play. So if you can ever game plan a team where you know they're always going to be an under team or you can get them going into the boundary where you know they're going to always set – set that two eye to the boundary or something like that. If you can get a tendency like that, it's really advantageous to run into this alignment here. All right, start this one over. This is a goal line play. So uh, this one, you might not like the box numbers, but here we're just saying either we're gonna throw this lock screen out here by the outside receiver coming in, or we're just gonna run the ball and uh, not read anyone, just get up upfield right now and uh, take advantage of catching the defense off guard. Also notice the box out technique. You can use that too by the tight end. If you got a guy playing a wide nine or a tight end that's maybe a basketball player or something like that, that can work the box out well. Uh, it's a good technique to have. It's literally a box out. Yep. He like just gets that. his hips right into him. Yeah, pushes him out. Yep. Exactly. And you can just see that uh, backside combo there. And the front side one, a little bit blurry there on the with the two linebackers, but front side combo and back side combo for the two and the A there. All right, and this is a this is another tag we had. Any any quarterback run play, you would tag it with a Q beforehand. So this would be Q thirteen split going tight zone left. Tight end's going to come across on that kick out block on the defensive end and have a take a two to the minus one and then a to the mic there. And this one, we're going to be reading that backside defensive end. Another one of those verify looks where we check the play at the line. Uh, like you can see here, it's a seven-man box, so it might not be good numbers uh, pre-snap. But after you read that defensive end, you get six on six, which is the whole point of doing read option, obviously. Yeah, hey, Ryan, pause work that a to Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, can you go back just a little bit, probably like four seconds, just so we have that, that view here? Um, yeah, a little bit further ahead. Okay, perfect. Right there. We got a question that came in from the chat, and I think this view will probably actually help you explain it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Young Ross asked, he's like, we use an H-back uh, between the guard and tackle instead of outside the tackle. Uh, how would you, how would you guys run it in that sense, or what would change the ID uh, from the ID set from that? Or do you just keep everything the same and just he's got to bust his ass to get out there? So as far as him still blocking that 24? Yeah, uh, yeah, the question, yeah, the question came in is, 
Yeah, they use their H back in between the guard and tackle as opposed to outside the right. tackle. Uh, so does anything change in that sense? Uh, as as far as for seal, I would say either uh, having that tackle work through and then having him just really try to, like you said, kind of bust his bust his ass to get up to that second level. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times we 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 would run with uh, with split. Most of the times our tight end would be in the, what we would call an in alignment. This would be an off where he's just off the ball in a normal attached alignment. We also would have in, which we would run split off of a lot, just to try to get him a little bit closer to this backside defensive end if he were to be on a split course. So we didn't really run that much uh, Bible and seal off of it as far as from this look would be. But what I would say for seal is have him still track up to the second level and either just find the easiest uh, access point to that minus two backer to get, get him cut off backside. Yeah. So keep his rules necessarily the same. It just he's yeah. gonna, like you said, bust his butt to get up to that next just, level. Just just changing the footwork on either knifing up underneath, or if the guard wants to hard play on even like a bait step, like the tackle does on his read course, bait step him kind of like we'll see on bluff eventually when we get to that slide. Uh, just sort of like an evade step on the defensive end, even influence him possibly could be an option. Got it. Yeah, just going through this one, like we said, reading that backside defensive end, two into the minus one, which is 48, and then Aang, this play side backer, number 34. All right, I'll get to the next next look here. Ryan, do me a favor and hit that hide button on the bottom of your screen there. Gotcha. There you go. Thank you. Uh, all right, so we looked a little bit of the read option. We'll take a more in-depth look at the actual drawing of it, and we'll look at an actual keep read um, in this cut-up. So the backside tackle is going to be locked on minus one as opposed to tracking him. So he's going to bait step. If that defensive end wants to knife hard across his face, he'll evade him and just because then he knows that the quarterback is going to pull it if he's knifing that hard across his face on the line. Bait step to secure the outside on that minus two back or the minus one backer like he would anyways. Um, and then we will look at a clip here. So this would be 13 book. Going to read that backside defensive end. He plays hard down. And the quarterback pulls it and gets an eight-yard gain around the outside. So we're still a in and two in here. We're just going to read that backside defensive end. If he crashes hard down, the quarterback's going to pull it around the outside like he does in this play. Or as you've seen in other plays, if he slow plays it and tries to keep contain, he'll give it like he has in the rest of the clips. Do you know if your right, quarterbacks... oh, go ahead. Do you know if your quarterbacks are taught to read the defensive end in a certain way? I think it's uh, it, it for the quarterbacks in that system. It was more of just for the bluff. You'll see it's an easy read, but for that where it's not as detached, either reading for him to step underneath the bait step by the tackle if he's in a tight alignment, like he has been on some plays, mm-hmm. or if he's just an outside true contained player more of just looking at his shoulders uh, if he okay. wants to close himself down to the run, or if not, then get around outside and take advantage of that. Right, absolutely. All right, so then for Bluff, Bluff's built off of a split, so it's still that same cross the backfield action by the Y, but instead he's going to take one step upfield to influence him and evade him outside and be a lead blocker, or you can do some RPO stuff where you get him into the flat and read an overhang defender that would be here. But for for this year, we just uh, had the influence step, lead blocker, and sometimes we'd add a bazooka tag for the X, where if that corner comes down, you just throw it over the top to the X on a, a triple option look off of that corner. So we'll take a look at some cut-ups of that one as well. And, and like we said before, still the same principles and philosophy up front, just a different backfield action and way to read read a player, and then create a triple option look off this cornerback. All 
So here, I'm going to have tight end come across, evades him. Quarterback's going to throw the ball there as that corner jumps up on – this corner jumps up on the bubble screen. The quarterback takes advantage of it. And we'll get a look from the tight just to kind of get a better look at that evade step to get that defensive end knifing underneath like he's simulating a split course. So you can see this is more of the alignment we were talking about in the discussion. This is one of the rare keeps where he doesn't throw an RPO off of it. A lot of the times we would tag an RPO and he'd end up throwing it to him, but on that one he gets a nice 15-yard gain as both the bubble and the vertical route are taken away. So we have the evade course, looking for the throw. Alley defender widens out, the cornerback stays true to the receiver. All right, and then... Ryan, we got another question that just came in through the chat. You're a popular yeah, man tonight. Um, for sure. Is is there a check to the run if the opponent does set to the boundary? So, <clears throat> and this came in a, a few minutes ago when you were talking, I think, um, two plays ago. But in a sense, is there, say you get a look that you don't like, like what's the check to it? Or are you guys just running it? Um, you know, I, I know in this, right. in this offense, you're always putting yourself in an advantage, right? Whether it be a conflict defender. Or mm -hmm. uh, leverage. What if you get? What if you call a play? You get out there and you don't like the look you're gonna get into. So we kind of talked about it in the install portion with the rules. Uh, the play side tackle. Our our main thing in this play. Let's say we got that strong safety in this look walked up. We don't have we in in order to get everyone blocked up. We have to get rid of all of our double teams by fan it all out there. So what we would do is we'd either check to a full zone where everyone's just kind of taking that that bucket step, so to say, and just zoning everything out. If there's a guy in your play side gap, take him. Try to work to his play side number. If he fights over the top, then the running back will cut off you. Or uh, if you're uncovered, then just working up to that second level through your zone. Or what you could do is you can – what we did a lot of times is would verify plays. So we'll get up to the line. The quarterback will take a look. The OC will have his look at the – at the formation and the alignment of the defense. If they don't like it, quarterback will peek to the sideline and we can kill the play and check into something else. Uh, and then, like we said, read option is a way to take away defenders to give yourself a better look. And then uh, game planning, obviously, is big, looking at defensive tendencies. And then we would also check in to uh, – we'll look at the adjustment to running it to a closed surface. That's a big thing to take away that – uh, that edge walked up pressure disadvantage you have is just putting a tight end on the front side and having him in the tackle go two for two for that. But we'll take a look at that in about two slides, I believe. Perfect. All right, so then triple option here. Just going to be reading that backside defensive end like you wouldn't book. Then you're just going to pitch off the minus two or the alley defender. So in here it would be that backside linebacker off of a pull read going into the alley. If he comes up, decides to play the quarterback, pitches it off. Normal pitch rules of any any option offense. We got twenty one personnel. We're gonna read this backside defensive end. He comes down, plays the run. We pitch off the alley defender. And our terminology for this, we would use uh, W words for our triple option, and we name them after different like basketball players. So we'd have this would be Wade. We'd have Wilson for Russell Wilson and then Wallace for Ben Wallace with the Pistons back in the day. All right. So then obviously not every team that you're going to face is going to run an even front. So you got to have adjustments to odd versus overhang uh, pressure. So a lot of teams will walk up that will backer to the boundary. Uh, we, you, if you want to run it to that push defender, you're going to push the mic to that play side overhang defender. Uh, the play side guard and the play side tackle are going to go two for two for the play side defensive end. The mic's just giving it like a fan call. Whatever terminology you want to use for that is a good addition. And then the center and the backside guard are going to one to the minus one on that nose guard. Center taking that, that same timing step. 
he wants to rock over into the play side a gap. The center will just collect him and the backside guard will, will work up to the minus one. And then if he's a two way player or wants to play heavy into that backside a gap, the center and the backside guard will then work their one to the minus one and the backside tackle is still following his locked and tracked rules to the minus two on that backside defensive end. So you can kind of get a better look at a drawing here. This would be 13 seal. If we've been showing all the drawings, we're going to push that Mike to the play side, uh, walked up pressure there. Uh, he's going to have a fan call by the tackle fan out to that backer guards going to fan out to that defensive end. We're going to have a one block to the minus one tackle is going to be locked on minus two. And then the Y is going to be the tight end is going to be just same, same technique, same footwork, just backside cut off on that backside defensive end. And we'll take a look at some clips for odd against this overhang look. Ryan, another question came in through the chat here. What do you consider covered and uncovered? What's the, is there a certain alignment that you would consider him covered or uncovered? For what position was that? Uh, defensive line. So if you're talking, um, you know, in an instance where is it from shoulder to shoulder? Like, is there a certain instance where uh, they're uncovered and covered up? We would look at it not so much from a covered and uncovered as far as uh, rules go, because you're looking at more of the alignment. So with like the, the, the backside one, if the defensive tackles in a shade, it doesn't matter if he's it, it. Well, it does matter if who's covered and uncovered in a sense, because you're more identifying the actual alignment itself instead of rather just being covered or uncovered for the rules. So I guess in this sense, being covered or uncovered in general isn't necessarily something to worry about, but it's more knowing what a two eye is or what a shade is or what a uh, three technique is rather than being covered or uncovered. Got it. We'll take a look here. You can't see him in this picture, but we're going to fan out to him, one to the mic, and the backside tackle does a good job of getting up to that minus one. We'll take another look at it here. So, yeah, we're going to push to that Mike walked up linebacker, one to the minus one, and that tackle's going to track up to the minus two. We'll just get one more look at the tight here. All right, and then mob is uh, stands for man on backside. It's another adjustment tag in addition to the B words and S words that we talked about earlier. Mob just means man on backside for backside guard and backside tackle. And it's just ideal for running RPOs. You can see the drawing here against a closed day gap with that backside three technique. Instead of twoing to the minus one, they're both going to be man on. You can run a slant. We, we'll take a look at an out route here. We're just reading that alley defender, whoever the conflict player is in your ideal RPO that you have installed in your offense already. You can just be added to it. You can still do pre-snap key screens like we saw in a couple other clips. A lot of versatility you can do with the mob as far as the RPO game. It's really beneficial to still keep those front side combinations on, but allowing RPOs to be built off of it and making sure those four guys up front are blocked first. And this one... We mostly just ran out routes this year, outs and goes. So we see this this guy walked up, pre-snap the quarterback's looking right now, just throw that out route. He jumps the gun a little bit and gets off sides. So we throw it for an incompletion, but you can just get a look at the RPO look there in a brief clip. And then close surface adjustment. This one's big uh, for countering that play side edge pressure. A lot of times, if you have 13 seal on, you can just switch the running back's alignment and check to what would be called 93 book here. Where we're going to run it to a closed three-man surface and just be running it to the right. So still, all the same rules apply for these four guys. Still A into the point, still uh, two into the minus one. The only difference is, is this tackle and the tight end are going to be two for two for that defensive end and the plus one. 
And then also one thing to note is in running it to a closed surface, the mic is going to be the first linebacker middle to play side as opposed to the first linebacker play side. So if uh, we had this tight end out here and this backer was still in the box in 12, he would be the mic. That would be the minus one and the minus two. If you'd want to be reading someone here to get better box numbers. Uh, so, yeah, that's just the one thing to note on that. And we'll take a look at the adjustment in this clip here as well. Here we're going to be running to the right. They're going to be two for two up to that backer right there. Going to A to the point and two to the minus one. And we're going to be reading that backside defensive end. You can look at the tight copy here. Same thing we talked about. Going two for two to the defensive end of that plus one and to the point, working backside to the minus one. All right, and then a lot of uh, defenses nowadays, I feel like it's a big topic in coaching, is how do we how do we go against a four eye? I feel like yep. a lot of teams have trouble with uh, with saying how are we going to create answers to this alignment that you don't see from every team, but it's starting to become popular. A lot of those tight fronts, double four eyes, the guys walked up, just a little adjustment that seemed to throw a lot of teams off. So uh, one team that we would play every year is John Carroll. Um, they were one of the top ranked defenses in the country this year. We're allowing like less than seven points a game going into the playoffs that year. I ended up beating Mount Union. We're one of the top defenses, and we didn't have answers built into it that were ideal to going up against their personnel, especially out of 4i. So what we would do is we would run it uh, where the quarterback would be reading that backside 4i as opposed to a walked-up defensive end like we might in other uh other looks against odd teams or even teams. And then we also used off of our split action, we'd bring a tight end across the backfield and kick out that backside four eye on a split course, like you can see in this drawing here. Uh, we'll take a look at a couple of the clips as well, just to give you a better look of. Mm -hmm. And this one, we look to the sideline, check to where we're going to be reading this guy he's gonna be working up to him gets a nice little gain here just a way to take that four eye player out of the box not having to worry about getting that tackle uh getting leverage on him just reading him instead This one, we're going to wham him, so come across. We'd call it slam to keep it with the S-word consistency, but we will call it a wham block, just coming across and kicking out that 4-I as you would on split, but instead doing it to the 4-I instead of that uh, walked-up backer back side. Mm. And then just last slide here, talk about bear. So just uh, different rules to bear. A lot of times we'll read that uh, three technique. Tackle is going to take that backside defensive end, still wanting up to the up to the point. But a lot of times with bear, you'll, you'll be on the goal line, so you'll see more more guys in the box than you'd like. Uh, still going two for two to that plus one, and then taking that play side defensive end. A lot of different looks you can do out of bear, so it's kind of hard to diagnose it on a general level. And, yeah, we'll just uh, take a look at a clip here, and then that'll be it. So it's still against John Carroll uh, here on the goal line. Good look at the tight here. So this one we, we didn't end up going to the tight end and running a read. We just said we're going to get upfield. We got a couple yards to get, and we're just trying to get behind our interior guys and get a push. So you can just see it's kind of trying to mash it up, especially in, in this philosophy is just getting it mashed up here. We're going to read the backside three technique here over the guard. Uh, tackle and tight end are going to go two for two up to that plus one, one into the mic. 
and he's locked on that minus one. A lot of coaches will talk about the importance of receivers blocking. This was in the fourth overtime of a game. Ends up uh, the guy that this slot receiver is supposed to block comes up and strips the ball on the goal line for the win for a two-point play. So it doesn't just take everyone up front blocking. It takes takes the other 10 guys on the field besides the quarterback, and even the quarterback can block with his eyes, as we've seen in the read option. So in order to get this stuff done, you got to teach the blocking not only on the interior with these schemes, but also working on technique for blocking in space for, for receivers. But that is all I got for tight zone. Let's see if we got any other questions. Perfect. Yeah, I, I have one or two. I'm going to open it up now if anyone has any questions um, about <clears throat> excuse me, about the tight zones for either Ryan or Mike. Um, question I have here is we talked a little bit about the uh, bazooka tag that you guys have on. Um, <clears throat> is there any other tags for wide receivers? You mentioned the lock tag. I believe it was the lock tag, the lock screen. Mm-hmm. Um, are those the two ones that you guys use as the bazooka and the lock screen to get the wide receivers involved in the RPO game? Yeah, so for all of our pre-snap stuff, mostly it was just lock and key. Key was our bubble, and lock was like the return screen from the outside receiver. Mm -hmm. So those were our pre-snap ones that were big, and as the year progressed, we started to get into more RPO stuff. Uh, But also, we had a sophomore quarterback that year from all this film, so it was kind of kind of trying to keep it simple, and he was really effective on the ground. So we didn't really get into a whole lot of post-snap RPO. Bazooka was one that we ran almost, I'd say, about 85 to 90% of the time off of bluff. That was our only RPO tag off of bluff where you'd have either just the straight uh, vertical route on the corner or you would have a fourth mm-hmm. option of that bubble screen if you had a slot receiver backside like we kind of saw in a couple of those clips. And post-snap RPOs, the one that we saw was called uh, – Saber, I believe that year, where you would run a vertical by the outside guy and then an out by the inside, uh, yep. reading that alley defender up to the safety and then throwing a whole shot if the safety wants to jump down the on the bubble. Got it. Uh, we also did a couple other ones, like a backside slant on mob was one that we did a couple times. Um, we'd use that still that same uh, stone was actually not Saber. Saber was the slant. Stone was the out route for that system for the terminology wise. So, yeah, you can incorporate a handful of different RPOs, some pre-snap and some post-snap as well off the backside of that. Yeah, and everything's as simple as a tag, which I think makes this whole system exactly. as easy as that, where it's you identify the front, uh, excuse me, the, identify the um, the play in the beginning, and then you tag, leave it open-ended, right? And I think that's exactly. you know why I think I, I like this new style. I should say new style, this, this spread style of offense because it's so easy to incorporate, uh, which leads me to my next question too. It's, and you know, if there's no other questions in the chat, I guess we'll wrap it up with this question. If um, if there, if you're a, a coach and you're looking to install this offense, okay, what were the first one or two things that you're gonna you're gonna implement into your offensive line to the beginning? Is it just the reads up front, um, the footwork? Like, what are the first two things that you're working on, Coach Swingle, when you get your offensive line? I think for offensive linemen, what first thing in the classroom. Even for, especially if you want to run a system like I was talking about in the beginning where you do like the whole mic and the plus one and minus one to base all of your run blocks, you can do that with all your schemes, not just not just tight zone. I think having them know that for as far as this specific install of the scheme, knowing those mic linebackers in the classroom, and then as far as on the field technique, I think it's important to work on uh, double team blocks, getting like hip to hip, uh, splitting the crotch with your first uh, drive and step getting through the midline and working up to the second level, staying square are all big things to consider as far as an on the field standpoint. But as far as like the building block of that play, I would say is being able to ID the mic and then working off that to the minus one. Cause everything like you can see in the play, everything is built off of where that mic is and where the minus one is. All, all the combinations are built off of it and all of the, uh, the other options and different rules built are built off of that mic. So I think as far as a classroom aspect, that's the most, um, most important thing to consider. Perfect. All right. Well, if there's no more questions in the chat, we got, uh, we're going to wrap up here. Go ahead, Mike. We got another question in the chat. We did get another question in the chat. Uh, okay, yeah. Is the QB always responsible for the defensive end? I know you you talked about it a little bit, and I know you guys yeah, changed it for that game plan with, with the four-eye, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so in all even, so if you, you can go back and look at the 
PowerPoint. I can sh we can share it on here, I believe. And then if anyone has any questions as well afterwards, you can DM me on Twitter. Uh, but as far as, so for all the S word ones that we talked about, steal and split, unless if there is an RPO tagged off the backside of it, quarterback is just going to straight hand the ball off to the running back. And all the B word ones that we talked about, so book, Bible, and bluff, those three, the quarterback against even front is always and forever going to be reading the backside defensive end.